Welcome to a tasting video. This video is comparing two different pilsners that I brewed, or pilsner style I should say. I did say in my original brew day video that I was inspired by Brewing TV for this experiment. And in that video they did a, a lager work around, one with USO5 and one with 2124 by Y Yeast. And I wanted the same thing but with the pilsner. Uh, so the recipe was just two row carapils, like 7% carapils, mash at 153 degrees Fahrenheit, saws in a boil, uh, 60, 20, and 6 minutes. Well, 6 minutes deep because I had some high efficiency issues. About 37 IBUs, um, and then I split in two different fermenters. Fermented warm around 65 degrees Fahrenheit for both, then transferred it over, uh, no, and then I just bottled after about 12, 14 days on each. I will link the brew day in the description below, along with the recipe and process as usual. Let's get started. My main concern about these is that they're going to be a little cloudy because I it is kind of rushed to some extent because I do want to submit this to homebrew competition in two days from now, today's July 11th. So yeah, so Friday is the, uh, the day. I did this in a weird way too where I split the priming sugar in half, meaning I did like my full priming sugar amount and then just eyeballed half into each batch to to uh do priming sugar in and a little risky doing it doing it that way you should probably measure out for each one separately but this first one's carbonated decently seeming and so is this one so it's good <clears throat> so i'm gonna put them next to the the caps here so i know what's what the clarity could still be a little clearer for homebrew competition, I might get dinged for that, unfortunately. I'm going to submit it anyway. If that's my only knock uh, in the notes, I can live with that. Color is about the same on both. One's going to be slightly browner, but I can't even tell. So, start with one on the right. I really, I'm curious to see if I can tell the difference blinding these. Nice, nice smell, nice grain smell. A little honey, if anything. But I'm not getting any dacetyl. Slight metallic, which I did get dinged for on my dunkel I did. So that could come back to bite me. But it's very minor. No hop aroma, which is fine, I assume. Slightly astringent, I think. But I don't know. I don't know if, it's, I don't know if that's astringency or if it's just regular bitterness. It has a slight watery metallic thing going on that I'm not a huge fan of. But it's not the end of the world. But it, I, whatever that is, I might get dinged for that if I submit this one. Aside from that little bit off there, it's 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 pretty good. And I'm being really really picky. This is still pretty enjoyable. The bitterness level I think is about right. I go a little higher maybe. I was a little concerned about that too. That 37 I've used should probably go for 40, especially for competition. Maybe even 41 or two, just to really drive home that style. Bohemian Pilsners can be a little, a little on the sweeter side. Um, and this is that. It's a little on the sweet side, but it's it's fine. It's not unpleasant. Okay. One on the left. This smells like diacetyl a little bit compared to this one. I'm not getting any diacetyl on this. I think that's what that is. It's really hard to tell. Almost astringent or something in there. I think it's slightly oxidized, and that's why I think it's slightly darker. I mean, it's probably really hard to tell on camera, but it is it's just slightly darker. God, what is that? It, it's, it's, I think it's slight diacetyl. Man, this is tough. I really wanted to taste it, taste this with somebody, get their opinion. And I was going to, but the last second, they didn't, our schedules didn't work out to do this on camera at least. So I'll still bring it to him. Uh, it's the head brewer, co owner of Brewery Beer Company. Um, He's won a ton of medals home brewing before he went pro. So um, I only get his opinion on this. So maybe tomorrow I'll go to the brewery. This is probably a little bit cleaner, a little more well-rounded, a little more balanced. Because I think there's some slight diacetyl in this, I'm talking slight. I think this is the 2124 because it is a lager yeast and I push the fermentation temp temperature on it. Based off that diacetyl or the little weirdness in this and maybe because it was too high fermentation, I'm going to say this is the 2124 and that this is the USO5. USO5. 
I, I just think only because the the, the diacetyl and, and it's like butterscotchy. So I will say that I think low levels of diacetyl are appropriate for the style, if I recall. So this probably wouldn't would probably be okay. Um because it is I think it's low enough to be acceptable. I can only get it if I like go back to back on him. You know, by itself it, I would probably get it, but it's it definitely it's it's subtle. But people who are really, really sensitive to it, it could pop out. But I think I'm gonna submit the USO5 one mostly now just for shits and giggles. Because I really want to see if I can get any decent score for mencing a Pilsner with an ale yeast. If this scores like in the 30s with an ale yeast, it'll be amazing. So this is a really, really good experiment. Uh, you might be able to ferment a pretty good lager and a pretty good Pilsner at that, which is allegedly a really difficult style to brew with an ale yeast and with like a common ale yeast too. Really glad I did this. I want to try stuff like this in the future. Yeast to me, the most yeast, the nuances are very minor and very hard for me to pick up. Uh, unless you're dealing with like Saison strains and things like that. So I'm going to keep playing with stuff like this. Um, and uh, yeah, I will definitely do a review, a secondary review, when I get my results in and see how I did. So uh, yeah, see you guys next time. And get out there and get weird. And weird with yeast. And weird with everything.